Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brandman Sean. And as you see, once again, I got a special guest for you guys. None other than Johnny Two Phones. Now, this guy is an artist. Um, he's he's had a lot of success in a short period of time, but I'm not saying he has major success. He has a long way that he wants to go. But I've watched this guy um, rise from you know dropping some early music and being in college, and now having a legitimate fan base, not just a little bit of a buzz. So I definitely would want to um, let you guys get some of the insight from what he's done and how he got to his point early on, and then maybe some of the just some some tips, some hacks. We'll figure out uh, out some other questions as we go. So let's hop into it. Yo, Johnny. Yes, sir, what's up? What, when you dropped uh, your very first song, like online or had the video, was that not the O? Was that the O? Um, it wasn't my very first one, but that was part of a rebrand I did. So that was probably the first serious song I dropped, yeah. Like with the video, yeah. That was my first music video. But... So I, but before we get into the rebrand, just to give people some early knowledge, how did you use your college, right? You went to, what's the name of the school again? Uh, SUNY Oni Island in New York. Right. So you went there and you were able to use your fan base, your college as a launch pad. And I know a lot of people in college want to do that. There's so many people who are rapping in college. Mm. The song you made was essentially like an anthem for your school, right? Yeah, 100%. Oh, you got low again, man. Uh, you can hear me now? All right, you sound a little bit better. Yeah, you're going to have to raise your voice. All right, yeah, my bad. But, yeah, um, you're basically asking how I did that, right? Yeah, talk to how you um, – did you do – was it strategic or – 100%, yeah. Um, so, going into college, like, I was kind of – I'm, I'm going to be a rapper and it's going to work out great. But I also played basketball. So I was recruited to play basketball here. So that off the rip gave me like a lot of friends. You know what I mean? I knew all the athletes and were the most popular people in the school. So before I even went to college, I was like, I'm going to use this as a, as a launch pad and I'm going to make an anthem and I knew how it was going to work out. So as soon as I got to college, first day, everybody's number was on my phone. I was the most popular kid. I was the most talkative person. And I, I, I hate being like that. I, I'm not a talker. Like, now I, it's like they, it's like what happens to this kid. So everybody's number. I, I saved it like with a special emoji next to it. So I knew when my song dropped that I was gonna text it. And then basketball season came around, so I had that working for me. So I basically just became a popular person in the school. And when my song dropped, I went around school and posted uh, posters up. And I was in like our quad handing out flyers and everything. And like nobody's ever seen something like that here or anywhere really so like that just stuck out to people and when the song like finally dropped people were like just naturally drawn to it like what is this crazy kid like have the offer so that's kind of how that draw happened and then once it got a little bit of traction after the drop um it started to show people from back home that he's a serious person like oh my god like these people for that i've never seen before are accepting him so now i'm accepting so it's just a mind trick in that and yeah. then after that, I just, every bar I went to, I talked to the DJ, got his number, and it was like, yo, play this, play this, play this. And then it just snowballed and snowballed. And it just cool. kind of took off from there. Now, when did you do the video? Because you got a video for it. It has probably about, what, like 60K um, views on YouTube yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, we, did, we dropped the video and the song at the same time. Just, to, just because... It was my first music video, and just the song, I felt like it needed a video just just because it's, it's, it's a party. You're in college. People want to see you party. People want to see you having fun. Um, and especially back home, like, the song worked great in Oneana, but it worked even better for people back home because they saw, like, this kid who just went away to play basketball is, like, having this spectacular time at college. So, oh. yeah. Okay. So what was your stuff from there then? Once you started to get 
that traction, you saw, all right, we had this one song. What was the very next thought in your mind as far as how you can keep pushing this forward? Um, the next thought was, all right, um, how are we going to, you know, how am I going to continue this? How are we going to do this? So from there, I started looking and my Instagram started popping up. So I was like, we're going to do three posts, at, like three posts a week. We're going to make sure we're going to keep people engaged. Whatever I have to do to keep people engaged is what we're going to do. And then like a month later, I dropped go to phones and with a, with a music video again. And that went up and that kind of, um, that get, got, it was the same treatment. So, and that was the first one I looked into like Twitter promotion and, um, I hit up my boy Glock Rivers. Um, he's a, he's a big deal in like New York. He gets, uh, he, uh, he like, he had a role in like Young Ma's blow up and A Boogie's blow up. So I was like, yo, throw my video up there. And that got like 2000 retweets and favorites. So that helped out that. So it's just like constant, just growth, but trying out new things as I went and kind of figuring out a route of how I'm going to do things. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Got you. Got you. Now this two phones thing, man, where does Johnny two phones come from? Um, it's just, just came about from when I was younger. It's not like, it's really just because like, I'm always like, at first I wanted to be a manager too. So I actually managed a G beats too. So with Joe Yard. So it's kind of just like the bit, the fact that I'm a businessman with it. Got you. But, yeah. but then I see you have Johnny boy as well. So yeah. is this a, an attempt or eventually are we just going to be hearing Johnny boy and not Johnny two phones or is there um, any rebranding taking place? That started off as a rebrand way, way before the O, and it kind of just stuck around. So now it's kind of like Champagne, Boppy, and Drake. It's just more of like a, just a secondhand term that people can see you as, or you know what I mean? Just something to play with, give people to think about. Another like, kind of, not a gimmick, because I don't really like gimmicks, but just something to like get people's attention again. All right. It's like a personality that you have. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So when we look at the, my like back to the O, all right, so you have this one song that's that's touching your entire college, and you said it's actually helping people back home uh, look at you in a certain light. And I love that idea, right, that that you were in tune with the actual perspective that people had and how it made you look huge to yeah. people where you just left. But at the same time, the O is limited from being one college, so other colleges aren't necessarily going to love, love it in the same way. Yeah, a lot of colleges. Um, <laughs> So we have this thing in our SUNY like schools. There's like at least a hundred SUNY schools in New York. But we have this like page called like uh, SUNY Chronicles. So um, I hit them up and uh, they posted the video, and that's how it kind of grew to the other colleges. And just the fact that I was getting like the plays and like the fans from it, like they were obviously like they're gonna fuck with it because it, it has attention. It's bringing attention to their page also. So that's kind of how it traveled to the other colleges. And for a while, I was kind of stuck in this cliche college rapper you know what I mean like and yep. you are in that little niche and I knew that wasn't gonna last for me one that's not really who I am and two that just it's not 2011 anymore so I just had to figure out a way like how am I like how am I gonna get out of this how am I gonna get out of this so then probably August I dropped a bank account remix with um Suave the Don and that kind of just took over it like that out did the O and like I think it has like a hundred and like ten thousand plays on SoundCloud right now. So that helps me. And then from there I just kept pushing away from like the college sound and kind of used it as like another not like not a complete rebrand, but minorly like rebrand. Like we're not really you know, we grew out of the O. So we got fans in other places and continue to drop music, but not party music. Yeah. So just a legitimate evolving and showing yourself a series as an artist. Exactly. Yeah. People like People at first, I was just like, "Oh, he did the O," oh. and now it's like, "Oh, he's like, he can actually rap." But like, we the next song after the O, oh, I dropped to go to phones, and it was like one of the most lyrical songs I ever did. Like, it just showed up, it showcased my bars, so like, it got respect. You know what I mean? People like, no matter what you hear about mumble rap, people love bars. At, at the end of the day, rap is rap. People want to see you can rap, mm -hmm. and that's why like I think Juice World is as big as Juice World is because he freestyled on an hour. He freestyled for an hour on the radio, and yeah. people who don't even like Juice World's music are like, he freestyled for an hour. Like, he's Juice World. Like, what? You know what I mean? So, rap. Like, I, I rapped. Like, I just stopped making party music for a little bit, and then I rapped. And now I met up with my producer, Hunter G, and we're kind of making our own sound right now. So, that's what I'm fucking with. Okay. 
But mm-hmm. so what I hear is you just kept it simple, man, in terms of the rebranding. And instead of really thinking of it too much as a rebrand, you evolve by and you have this one piece of content. People know you for it. A lot of artists in college kind of do get stuck in that little that space, that zone. Hey, you're the you're the college rapper, and it's, it becomes kind of corny after a second, right? Yeah. So, all you did to overcome it was create better content. Exactly, we evolved. Yeah, that's what I'd say. We evolved, and we just pushed past it. Like it got thrown at us a couple times, but we just took it on the chin and just was like, all right, well, we're gonna make better music next. And every song I try to make has to be better than the last. And we just yeah. grow. We see what people like from our music. We see what we like from our music, and then we release it. You know what I mean? Yep. And at the end of the day, if we don't like it, we don't drop it. <laughs> That's a good strategy. All right, so when we talk about – well, all right, you got quite a few songs out there right now, though. Um, yeah. And I know that you said you have a manager. Yep. When did this happen? Did you have it when you dropped the O, or when did the habit getting a manager come to the play? Right now, like, I have a manager, but I'm still the one who's in control of everything. Nobody's really, like, I wouldn't say a manager more. Like, I'd say a manager. It's just rough. I'm not calling him a manager, but it's, like, we're kind of at the same – we're working the same – we're working the same route right now. Like, nobody's really, like, oh, I'm Johnny Two Phones manager. It's like, no, we work with Johnny. So my advice on that is always be in charge. Always, always have control over everything. Like, the show we did – I headlined um, at the Upstate Concert Hall this summer, and the piece of paper I got from them says Johnny's Two Phones sold 703 tickets. Um, and it, they wrote, like, reviews just so I could show it to other venues when I go to them, like, hey, like, this guy's about his business. He handles everything. Like, from top to bottom, I was in charge of that show. Radio promotion, flyers, all that. Like, And, like, it was the most annoying thing I ever, de- I ever had to deal with. Like, I had to deal with all the artists – I had to deal with all the BS, all the bullshit. But at the end of the day, I learned how to run a show. I learned how to book my own show. I learned how much I need to be paid. I learned how much I'm worth. And nobody, like, I got taken advantage and I didn't know. But now I know from that mistake, like, okay, well, next time I'm not doing that. We're doing it this way because I know the way now. Now, why did you say you got taken advantage of? What do you mean? What happened? um, We sold 700. I sold 703 tickets, like, all of us together. But... For the most part, it was like uh, I was a headliner, so it was like you know it's my show. So it was me and Swap the Down show. I'm sorry, but we sold 703 tickets and only got I got paid about 1.2 k. So it was like we didn't get completely taken advantage, but 700 tickets at 20 dollars, a little bit more than 1.3 k. So it's like the money situation. So now when I go to a venue, I'm renting it out. I'm not going through promoters. Or, no, we're we're going through us. Got it. So you went with some promoters. The promoters bought the venue, and then they brought you in and let you do all the marketing, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very familiar with that. <laughs> it happens to a lot of artists. It's not the artist's fault, because in our area, they're so scared to book rap that they, like, took advantage of us because they, they knew that there was no other way to do it. So, but now... I have that piece of paper that says I sold 703 tickets. I performed at the Palace Theater in front of 3,000 people. Like, I can, I kind of got a little leeway in my, you know what I mean? I got some people behind me that are like, no, he's fine. His fans are good. They're not fighting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're trying to book a rap show, you can't bring, like, everybody wants to be gangster, but you can't bring that. Like, they're not, no venue really wants that. Like, 6 9 isn't booking the same places as, like, a Khalid, like, a Khaled. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not. It's not how that works. Six nine is losing out on so much money because all that BS you bring. Yeah, I mean, you gotta. A lot of people don't realize this, but like you gonna have to have like some insurance <laughs> when you bring those kind of problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> problems are like serious things. Yeah. Just... Yep. And the venues, that means they have to hire, have a higher insurance. It's, it's a that's a lot of reasons why they don't want those problems. So. I think that's great that you actually got that piece of paper, man. Like, that's dope that you actually did this. You you handle it. Not only did you understand the ins and outs, but now you have this proof to handle yourself on a business side and you go to new venues with that approach. Mm-hmm. Now, do you plan on or have you actually booked out a venue yourself and did a show since then? Um, not yet, but we're going to run it back uh, this summer again. We're going to do, like, the same show, maybe in a different location. But uh, we're going to run it all through us. 
and especially right now because I just um I just partnered up with a little booking agency. So now it's like a promoter, but that promoter is that promoter's like we're like you know you're real close. So there's nothing, no funny business going on with me and a little booking agency. We're we're gonna come down to an agreement we both agree on and we both find like suitable. Now, how'd you get on with the booking agency? Did they reach out to you? Did you reach out to them? Um, so after that show, like we kind of, so this is a year after the O. So this is just this past summer. Like the O came, bank account came. Then I dropped this EP that was really experimental. And I was kind of just finding myself as an artist. And then I dropped, then I linked up with Honey G and we dropped um, Gelato, Here For It, and Stock, which are my three biggest songs. And they were all in a row. So like, and we did diff- we did things differently around that time. Like we marketed differently. We can talk about that in a second. And then to cap the summer off, we were like, okay, before I go back to school, we'll do this show. So we did that. And then like, we just had all this buzz going around. Like um, we had Soli Hats buzz. We had My Buzz. We had Suave Down buzz. And these are like three, with the three biggest up and coming artists right now. Like Soli Had just did a show in LA and sold like 300 tickets himself. So we just had, well, like our areas is gonna be like, it's going to be the next Atlanta. In my eyes, it's going to be the next Atlanta. It's going to be the next hit spot. So we have all this buzz going around. So, you know I mean? People are going to come to you and you have to weave out who's really for you and who you really like. And a DJ hooked us up with a little booking agency and we sat down and talked to them. And I really liked what they had to offer. I didn't feel like they were on any funny shit. And I felt like it was a good fit for me. But so the DJ just said, hey, yo, y- y'all should get hooked up with a booking agency or you kind of wanted to do that yourself? Um. I saw Russ's video on, like, you should look for a booking agent. So I was like, I'll look for a booking agent. And then that's kind of how that went. I kept asking around, asking around. And I just, this uh, DJ Chirac, his name is like, uh, he's kept showing my music to the guys. He's like, yeah, yeah, I fuck with it, I fuck with it. And then he finally sat us down. And, like, I think he just picked up on the fact that I wasn't a bullshitter. So he kind of picked me up as an artist. And we've kind of just been going around, pushing around different uh, areas. There it is. So that's what I really wanted to get to because I mean, me and you kind of talked about, hey, no bullshit, right? Like you and you've you've been doing your stuff. You got this relationship with this DJ that you built, and you're asking around. So there's no better way to do it, honestly, with for with an artist that's ground up. And when we were talking about advice at scale, I just gotta say, hey, if you're out there, you ask around. If you're putting shows in like you were doing, and you're booking out some shows that's and you and you show people this and then they see this you're serious you're not bullshitting and you continue to keep working like you don't just ask them beg and wait for an op you just keep working then eventually people are gonna say hey you know what all right i, I got something here something and, it, and you, it's up to then i mean it's up to you at that point to decide if it's legit or not and you know all that other stuff but i'm a firm believer of whatever you put out in, in the universe you work for it's gonna come to you right? um, yep I woke up every day and I was like, all right, this, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But in the same, at the same time, I was hustling with my head down. And yep. Then, like that shit, like I write everything. Like you can see like, like my little board over there has all my goals. And legitimately the first column of goals is like all checked off. Like, and like you just wake up. The first thing on your mind has to be that. You brush your teeth on your mind. You know what I mean? You're in the shower on your mind. And yep. that shit like really, it's like, I don't know. I think it's a book called The Secret that talked about it, but that it's real. Oh, yeah. That like I don't really like that all that weird stuff. Like oh, the universe. But that no, that's one hundred percent real. Hey man, I, I don't see how like people can people can make that shit more mystical than it is, and and yeah. that's the part that loses me. But hey, just apply it to sports, man. You can't tell me you're not gonna be able to make ten shots in a row if you don't if you practice right. If you practice, eventually you can make ten three pointers in a row. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's simple as that. You put in the work, and eventually you get there. Like, some yeah. things are aren't that straightforward, but you still do. Like, you think into existence. You put in the work to get there, and eventually it's there. I don't know, like. I like it's it's straight logic in my mind. It is logic, and like a big thing that I got caught up like early on, or when I was like really young, like 17, is like, oh, guys, like little pump, like no way they're working as hard as me. Like, why is it working faster for them? Like, you can't get caught up in that. Um, yeah. One, it all depends on your area. Two, it just it's just life. Like people, some people have to work a little bit less. Like, and yeah. that's okay because at the end of the day, nobody in this fucking world can tell me I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. It's gonna happen. But it might take two months. It might take two days. It might take two years. But yeah. it's gonna happen. Yep. 
hey, I mean, I'm with it. I mean, me seeing the work that you have done and progress you've made, um, you've made since I've known, you know, you, I, I got faith that it, like, I, I you, you're going to do something. Like, I don't know, like, you know, once you get a certain you threshold, you know, yeah, like yeah. a certain level of celebrity or something like that, that's, there's other factors that come into play, but I have no doubt that you'll be a certain level of success for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like now to get more, more specific in your man, uh, in terms of manager again, what at what period did the manager come into play? Um, I'd say around the time, probably like a year ago, probably a year now. So that was like right when you dropped the O, or right after? Um, it was a couple, probably like six months after. I decided like, cause I I go to school too, so that's that's why my situation is a little different with the manager, cause my manager I don't have a manager to just to like do things. I'm still looking for. I want personally like, my manager right now is like um I want uh. I think what I'm missing is an experience manager, somebody who can come in and be like, oh, no, no, we're going to take you this, we're going to do that, blah, blah, blah. But for my manager, my job for him is really right now, like, take care of the stuff at home in the 518 that I can't really take care of right now because I have a stats test tomorrow. Or, like, because I have to write these songs with 100G, we have to focus on this right now, you take care of that. Like, we're a real team, kind of, we're really meshed together. Like, we don't really have a certain specific job, like, oh, he's manager, oh, he's promoter. We have, like, no, you, this shit has to get taken care of. So take care of it. Why don't I take care of this? But, yeah, I mean, that's not necessarily atypical, man. A lot of people have a day-to-day manager, and then they have the manager that's, like, man, you that's know. That's exactly That's what a little booking agency, like, we have a day-to-day manager, and then a little booking agency is kind of, like, our booking agent, our manager kind of guy. We go to, like, hey, we want to do this. Uh, can you help us out with it? Yeah. Yeah, hey, we'll run you over here. Let's do this. Okay. Bet. Yeah. You had anything that came through with the booking agency yet or the relationship a little bit more new? Um, it's still new, but they're the ones who got us the show for uh we uh got to open up for a juice world and um we get to open up for Ooh, little Uzi in December. So it's like they're getting us on, like they're getting us they're doing ways through a booking agency. They're doing things oh, the way a booking agency would do things. So we're we're getting booked on shows, but they're impressed because we did we did a show in front of Juice World and play gelato and cut the music and the whole song, the whole crowd sung the song. It was 3,000 people. Of course, like, video, if you man. do things like this, people are drawn to you, you know what I mean? But, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, but that's, that's all happened because, like, we hustled with our head down and woke up every morning, like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I saw that clip, man. That was wild. And that's the kind of stuff that's going to make people remember, all right, yeah, we could do a little bit more with this artist. Uh, yeah. yeah, 100%. Might need to try him out in, in, in front of – I don't know, some other show. We might be able to book him in another city, all that stuff. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, so when you talk about Gelato, man, let's go ahead and get to Gelato because, like I said, that's that's my favorite song of yours right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been that way for a few months. So how did that song come about? And then what was the push behind that song to get it to, like, 700K on Spotify now, you said? Uh, Spotify is 200K. Apple Music is, like, 500 and then app uh soundcloud's about 100 so okay yeah yeah so tell so, me so with that that was um so i dropped after the bank account remix i dropped this little ep and that was kind of like the down part of my career that was like a learning experience for me that, that was my learning failure for me um and even with that being said i don't really think the music was a failure um i just think i put too much i banked on it too much i thought i was gonna drop that and become famous and then it didn't happen. <laughs> obviously i'm not famous but um uh, so I met Hunter G. Um, he's a producer. Um, check his shit out. But uh, Hunter G beats. Um, so I was like, hey. Um, he just played me. As, he played my roommate a song, and he DM'd me, and I w- wasn't really paying attention to it. I was like, I was like, ah, uh, whatever. But then my roommate played me a song. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Like, I need, I need this guy's beats. So we linked up that day, and I told him I was like, yo, fuck with me, and like, I I, I laid out the plan for him. I was like, we're gonna drop three songs. Uh, they're gonna go crazy. We're gonna do these two shows with a boogie. It's gonna go up, and then we're gonna have a whole different fucking um, a whole bunch of window of opportunity. And like at first he was like, "What are you talking about?" But then we made the songs. We made the songs, and I saw how Sully had kind of dropped little previews before he dropped his songs. He dropped like previews and snippets of his songs. Those would go up. Then he dropped the song, and it would like directly correlate so my whole way of like releasing music kind of changed because i like kind of I, I copied it but i like molded it to me 
So I like, so what I do is like, I'll drop a preview a couple of days before I drop the song, then I'll drop the cover art and then I'll drop the song link. And like that really worked out for Gelato because on um, the preview had like, I think like 2000 retweets on Twitter and like then the fucking, the, uh, the Instagram video had like a couple thousand likes. So it was just like that overall general buzz just made it the first day go crazy and then the next weekend we had two shows with a boogie in two different places so like people hear this crazy good song and then they see you with a boogie and then next thing you know your song's like the biggest one so it's like kind of crazy how it just all worked out dope dope man that um like all those things it's funny like when you got the quality then the perception actually helps Fuel. Yeah, a lot, people, a lot of times people work on that perception before they got a quality that's moving by itself. Yeah, but I mean, because I could tell you, me, the, I didn't get. I think when I listen, when I watched the gelato video, like that video clip that you had with mm-hmm. the crowd, um, like doing all the words, you cut the music off, all that stuff. That yeah. reminded me of when my sister used to come back from college. And she would be introducing me to all these songs. Like I was in like eighth, ninth grade. And they were like songs, like it was like Lil Bootsy and stuff back then. Cause she went to like Mississippi to go to school. But she would be like playing the songs and then telling me experiences at the parties and like how everybody loved it and it'll go wild. So I have all these pictures in my head. You're watching that video, it was a real life picture. So I could feel like the excitement. And I feel like that shit probably made me like the song even more than I might have that quickly. Exactly. Yeah, I gave people something to attach to. I gave yeah. them, like an experience. Like a song is an experience. You know what I mean? Like people, like you hear, you see it on movies all the time. Um, like oh, that's our song. Like that one. That's one. This song is gonna bring me back to this part of my life forever. Yep. And, like I, think, even though I'm not the biggest artist in the world, like I'm a decent sized artist. But like I think it's cool that someday somebody's gonna be talking to a kid and be like, oh yeah, like I was in school. Like this was our song. Like this was me and your mom's song. Or Yep. Let's do some it takes me back to when I was like 18. So just like matching up experiences with music is, you know what I mean? It's part of it. And that's something I learned from just shit like stuff we're doing right now. Like I've watched tons and tons and tons of videos of like Travis Scott performing. And I'm just like, all right, how's, how's he making this memorable? Yep. How does Joe Badass make his performances memorable? Like you have to be a real student of the game if you want success. Like, do you know what I mean? Like none of this is just randomness like this is all like it's you you learn it it's learned behavior all this yeah, is learned. i want to hear more about that from you man because for as an artist really your job is to create moments like exactly, yeah. it's, a, it's a series of moments you look at anybody's career it's like bam they have one moment and then that moment might get them to this level of artist and then you know they're killing they're they're establishing and curating nurturing that fan base then bam they have another moment that might take them to another level right and everybody's getting these micro moments who already know you but every other moment like every other big moment will introduce you to another um fan base like how do you look to create moments um there's like i just there's like different ways to do it but the main thing is i i'm a planner and like like i said i wake up and i'm like this is gonna happen there's no possible way this does not happen so like i'll plan out all my stuff and then one of them might not work out the way you wanted it to work out, but the next one did. Cause we dropped stock first and I was like, no, 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 stock's going crazy. It's going to get a hundred thousand dollars. Move my first one at a hundred thousand. And then like we dropped it and it went iffy. And then we dropped gelato and it went up. And like, I thought stock was going to be the one, but gelato would be the one, yeah. but we were prepared. What was with what, like for what was next? Like you have to be prepared for what's next. That's like the best advice I could give. Cause like you see a lot of guys, like no dirt on anybody's name. Like I think Rob Stone's an amazing artist, but like, you come in with the chill building and then there was no real follow-up. So I think the biggest part of like building on moments and like getting everything you get out of it is follow-up, following up. Like it doesn't, maybe you just drop the song, follow it up with a visual. Maybe you just, you know what I mean? Follow it up with a Instagram live. Like how are you going to interact with your fans differently now? How are you going to make some, how are you going to keep their attention? And then, you know what I mean? How are you going to make them fans? Like, you know what I mean? You're not, I hate to talk about it like it's a product, like myself is a product. That's what I am. And I like, how are you going to sell yourself to these people? You know what I mean? And yeah. I do it in a genuine way because I'm not this, I'm going to make myself, I'm not changing any myself for anybody. So people fuck with that. But 
it's all just plan it out, follow it up. And if it doesn't work, whatever, keep pushing. Like we're going, we're on to the next, we're on to the next. Like, and sometimes that shit just randomly happens. Like when Mac Miller passed, God rest his soul. Um, that was one of my biggest influences. And out of nowhere, I was just like, I'm going to do a little freestyle video for him. Cause he's the reason I rap. So I think it's like fair that I do this. So I dropped it. And next thing you know, um, James Charles, little brother, Ian Charles posted on his story. It was already going up crazy, and like the video has like twenty thousand views and like ten thousand, like seven thousand likes on my Instagram, and like that that wasn't planned out. That just happened, and I didn't even want that to happen because I'm not gonna do something like that for clout. But it's just the way that happened. People were drawn to the fact that we were all going through that similar experience of mourning Mac Miller, and that song made the like an experience for them. It connected them to that. Like we all grew up on Mac Miller. Like you know what I mean? So yeah. that's why that meant so much to me, and it meant so much to other people. I, was up. I, I like the fact that you're able to separate and realize which moments happen organically, whether you try or not, and then you can plan for some, and that shit might not go how you thought it was. And it just is what it is. Keep moving. It is what it is. That's Yeah, that's the best way to say it. Like, just keep moving. Don't get caught up. Because that's, that's why I referred to that little EP I dropped as, like, the biggest failure I ever had. Because, like, after that, I was like, damn, like, I'm done. Like, I don't know what to do now. Like, nobody likes me anymore. Blah, blah, blah. I'm over. My career's over. And then four months later, gelato is the biggest thing I've ever done. It shadow it's like the O is like nothing now. It's gelato. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, man, what do you got planned next? You you have anything you feel like might you know yeah. level for you? Yeah, I think I have like two or three right now. I think my next two or three are gonna go crazy right now. Um I've been like showcasing it like now, so like now I'm like all right, it's been a little while. People are like hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. But I just had that Mac Miller thing. I had the Juice World show. Like these are all big things that happen. So everybody's like, I wanted people to wait. Like, what's next? What's next? So um, I've been like previewing stuff on my Instagram Live, and I've never done that before. But people are really fucking with it. So now I'm going on Instagram Live every Sunday at eight. So I'm gonna drop the song soon, and everybody's kind of already knows it because it's like a catchy song, and they've heard it on my Instagram Live so much that people are like saying it to me, and they they don't even know like they've never even heard like you know what I mean? They've never had it on by themselves. They've only heard it through my Instagram Live, and all these shows I've been doing, I've been playing it there. So it's just a new type of promotion I'm gonna try out, and like I think it's gonna work, and I'm gonna follow it up with a music video, and see how that run does. And if we don't, if it doesn't do what we want it to do, we have another one to follow it up with. Got you. So are you, do you feel like there are any promotional methods that you just hold on to as you keep getting to new levels in your career? Or do you pretty much say, oh, I'm at this level now, and then you find some new things and kind of get rid of the old promotional methods altogether? Are you adding on or are you eliminating and just restart from ground zero? I've, I've changed over the years. Like we said, like we've evolved. But <clears throat> the one thing I do hold on to is like, um, just that drop pattern of snippet, cover art, uh, link. And then we, and then <clears throat> usually what I do is like, Hey, I'll post it on my Snapchat and I'll be like, post this on your uh, Snapchat story or post this on your Instagram story. And that's what, it, this is like nothing new. Like everybody does this, but it's just what works for me and works for my fans. And like I said, that's how I built kind of my like cult following. Cause like, organic like i build up organically like i didn't really pay for any promotion ever like we kind of just use people like use fans as promoters and like they're not bothered by it because they want to see like you know what i mean like i treat my fans as like if we're a team like they're a part of the team like they are like you know what i mean they want to see you bigger than what you are they want to see you next to drake like in some people's eyes you are next to drake so they want to like make you get there so Dope. never like be afraid to like ask your fans for help because they're like the only people who genuinely want to help <laughs> like with music in return. Music is the only thing you have to give in return. Yeah. Hey, that, that's real, man. And what's really big is when it comes to promotion and building your own system, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be anything super genius. Like obviously because of, you know, the things I talk about, people ask me all kind of questions looking for the most genius thing in the world. Um, sometimes a lot of times but when you talk about that simple drop schedule preview album cover drop song right like there's still like what you want in, within your system is some stuff that you don't have to think about like no, you no, might no. change this when it comes to this song because it has its own creative or you're, you're on you're doing this but you need those things that are a part of your system that are going to get a certain level of results that you just do and you know it's, it's not too much thought put into it so i'm glad you got a few of those 
hundred percent. And even like over the like all these artists that I've met up with, um, after a while of talking to them, it's kind of just like there's no like they they don't have just like God talking to you like they don't have any there's no secret sauce like there's no secret formula there's no we prayed to the Bible seven times and then it happened there's not, like there's none of that it's just hustle you gotta grind like you gotta be ready to grind and you gotta figure out what works for you what works for your area what works for your college like you have to like trial and error it and there's unless you have cheat codes like you said like the connections the managers that are already experienced like all the people who already figured it out like yep i came up in like upstate new york like you've never heard of a rapper from there like i'm the like me so that's why we're the biggest ones from there um we made our own lane but we figured it out and now we're on like radio stations we're doing all this but we've been doing it for a while we've been doing it since 17 16 now we're like 20 and we're in our 20s but so, well, you're still in college right now um i know you say you're gonna you're gonna be done with it I was that's because you're graduating or are you just gonna have to drop um, out so you can take advantage it finally, got to, it finally got to a point where it's like this is gonna be my job forever yeah you know what i mean like i was like this is this is it um and i've got all the success and like all this stuff but i've never given it a hundred percent and i think that's like not fair to like my fans are not fair to like just this overall just, you know what I mean? The culture, like, how are you, you going to get this far? And you didn't even give it 100% yet. Like, what? Like, what? Go give it 100% see what the fuck can happen. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've given it 100%, but, like, I've always had – I used to play basketball or I, I'm going to school still. Like, so it's like, you know what I mean? I cut basketball out of my life and then all this other shit happened. So, like, cut, yeah. cut school out. Like, and, like, I'm not dropping out of school on a whim. Like, we have – legitimate plans i watched a logic interview that said don't drop out of school just to become a soundcloud rapper like drop out if you have a plan and you're like you know what i mean you're established like if you're in school right now and you're like oh man like i get like 100 plays on my soundcloud i'm about to just drop out no don't if you can make the people <laughs> like don't do that because that's a bad tat, bad plan yeah. like get a solid plan make the people around you love your music because if the people around you could love your music, like I came up in the 518, like it's the most hateful fucking place on the planet. But after I proved to them that they like, dang, like if they can fuck with me, like mm, L LA could fuck with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, I think I like that advice. That's some of the best advice I've heard, I've heard when it comes to just being in college. Like wait till you have results. Yeah. You have real results that you, matter of fact, wait till you have repeatable results if possible. Yeah. All right, maybe if you have, I've known um, some people that they had like a management deal or something like like. But you have to have something that's a lot more tangible than a few plays and just a dream. I mean, you can do it that way, but you make it so much easier and better on yourself if you wait till you have something. And like, you have to think of college is like it's a perfect market. It's a group of people from all different places that legitimately have to be in a circle for an extended period of time. Like. Yep make those people your fans like go out and get yourself out there if you have to change yourself as a person i had to change myself as a person i had to like develop social skills like i i don't like to talk to people i don't like talking and i'm one of the most talkative talkative, talkative people i know like i learned how to network you know what i mean and it's yeah. not not fake it's not clout chasing i don't i don't do any of that weird shit i just like it's network i'm a businessman like you know what i mean like you, you got to take care of business when it's time to take care of business it is what it is, man. I agree because, I mean, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, people who – some people will be like, ah, oh, you're dick riding. No, you're fucking – you're doing your job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, as an artist, your job is not just to make music. You got to take care of the business side of it, too. All right. So, it's all, like, everything comes into play, you know what I mean? And it takes time. Like, I'm, like, I'm talking like I am like made it. Like, no, I didn't. Like, I'm still waking up struggling every day. Well, we've had we've had a lot of success, so it comes and it goes, and you just gotta learn from your mistakes. Cool, cool. And hey, people, don't forget you graduate if you don't have uh, if you're not blown up yet, you can get a certain type of job and at least be able to fund your career and be your own investor, All right, As yeah. opposed to dropping out, having a job that's not even gonna give you enough money to to push your money, your stuff forward. Like J. Cole, he graduated. He said, I remember I used to be a heavy J. Cole fan. Like he, he thought he was gonna go to college, go to in New York and get signed in one week. And that man looked up, he was graduated. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And like sometimes you just look at like you can't don't get caught up in looking at other artists. Cause a lot of my friends come up to me and like, 
like little Pum will be playing at the party and they'll be like, does that piss you off? And I'll be like, no, why, why, why would another person's success piss me off? Like yeah. that is the weirdest mentality I've ever heard of just because it happened for him the way it happened for him. Yep. Like doesn't take away from my grind. doesn't take away from my success at all. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just a different experience, like life. Like it's like the people, like people have problems with life. Like people have life problems that like kind of come off as like haters. Like, no, why, why are you worried about little pump? Like, why is mumble rap so talked down upon? Like it's art, like let them do their art. Don't worry about what you're doing. Hey man, that's, I mean, that's a winning mentality, man. I, like I fuck with you for that, man. Like that's the only way yeah. Like people who don't think that way, I don't understand. Like you, who you look and you see somebody else's success, you envy. I don't even want to be around that type type of mindset because if I become successful and they happen to be taking along, they're gonna be feeling the same way about me. So I don't, I don't even care about that. I like I don't feel any way you want. Like, fucking like, what are you gonna do to me? Nothing. Like, not a problem with that. That's a different show. <laughs> but uh, it's like if you're so focused on somebody else, you're not focused on what we got going on. You know what I mean? You're that's taken away from our hustle. That's taken away mind space right now and that's like something we can't afford you know yep. what i mean we don't have the luxury of take like focusing on other shit we have to focus on what we're doing for sure man 100 percent uh i think you laid a sense of a blueprint um in this interview for people like if you have you're a high schooler and you're gonna go to college this is i mean this is something that you can basically do right like all the steps that you've taken like you, because you came into the college with the mindset that I'm going to rap. You already knew. I didn't, yeah. which I didn't know that before. That you knew, all right, I'm going to rap. I thought you were on a basketball team and just said, "Yo, let's play around, let's rap." And then next thing you know, start moving. He said, "Oh shit, I'm gonna go this way." But you came in, start networking from day one, like built that audience, build those relationships, then dropped. Right. Yeah. So come in, build your relationships, drop your music. And then once you get a buzz from there, you know, it'll be slightly different from people from there. But how do you follow up? Like, keep on following up. So I, I like the fact that that blueprint is there because a lot of people in high school who are going to be going to college these days still know they want to be a rapper and they don't really want to get in college at all. So, But with all that being said, the first thing I made sure I could do was rap. Like, that's a lot of people's problem. Like, <sighs> like a lot of that people part like, <laughs> you have to make sure you have to be your hardest critique. Like you have to critique yourself the hardest. You have to make sure what you're putting out there is like good. And like don't be afraid to fail. Like, you know what I mean? Like I that's kind of what my high school years were doing. I was experimenting with different sounds. I was making beats. I was figuring out who I was as an artist. And I'm still doing that to this day. You know what I mean? Like J. Mm -hmm. Cole is still switching music. Kendrick Lamar is still switching music. Drake switches music every other day. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're still growing. Like the growth never stops. But before you put yourself out to the world and make sure you're, you're like, you're okay with it. Like, you know what I mean? And don't just be passive about it. Don't be like, ah, oh, that's pretty good. No, like if it's not right, if it's not a grade work, don't put it out. Don't put it out. Make sure it's good enough. Cause <sighs> hate is bad. They will get you in those comment sections. That's a bad place to be. Oh yeah. They gonna get you right, man. For sure. <laughs> hey, but boy. also listen to those people in the comment sections. If they're like, your flow is terrible, work on your flow. You know what I mean? That was my, that's what I did in high school. Like they used to be like tons of, tons of haters, but I listened to it. Like, you know what I mean? Don't take it personal, but sometimes those hating people are like, have genuinely good points. Like your music sucks. Like maybe it does suck. Like maybe I should work on it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, yeah. but don't take that. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's people who think Kendrick Martin music sucks. He, at that point, he's done listening to people. I'm talking about if you're coming up, you're just starting, like listen to what people have to say. Like people are like the only only the resource on this planet that like you know what i mean that will that will always be there people are resources that's a good way to look at it well hey i think that's a dope way to end the interview man um you guys can follow johnny at johnny two phones well just go ahead and shout out all your social media and where you might specifically want them to follow you because i don't know if it's a certain place you want to direct people uh follow me on like uh follow me on um instagram johnny two phones underscore Honestly, Twitter, Johnny's Two Phones. Anywhere, any social media is Johnny's Two Phones. Um, SoundCloud is Johnny Two Phones. And then Spotify and Apple Music are Johnny Two Phones. And follow me, subscribe to me on YouTube. I'm trying to build that up. I'm in the process of doing that. That's something I have not mastered. So, oh man, I definitely get to me on YouTube. Bet, bet. Do, do all that, man. Follow, follow my guy. This is Johnny Two, the number two phones. The number two. 
Yeah, don't 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 go don't go looking up T double O or T W O. Um and hey, as always, if you like this video, go ahead hit that like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.